Welcome back to another episode of Mental Dimes Podcast. I'm, I'm your host, Seth Warren. I'm filling in for old Chuck. He made some excuse. He's probably out doing something random. Uh, but for the time being, I'll be the host. Alongside me, I got Coach B. Let's go. And I got Phil. Glad to be back. <laughs> for my two-week uh, hiatus. We had a crazy week in college football this week, so I'm just going to hop right into it. Uh, so the first topic is there's 15 teams that are still fighting for the chance to make it to the college football playoffs. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to break down each team and what it takes for them to make it to the final four. So starting with SEC, we got the University of Georgia. How does that team get in? I think they're a lock. They're a lock. lock. They're a lock. The, even if they don't win the SEC championship, I, I think they're a lock. That's, first of all, that's I, tough, I, think, I agree. I think it'd be a great year that we just go ahead and jump to 12. <laughs> I think that makes oh, sense I, just to make things a lot easier. But I do agree. I think, I think Georgia's a lock, but if, if Bama beats them, it messes everything up. <laughs> it does. Because, I, I, you know, 7-2 Bama can't get in. But if you got 7-1 Bama and 7-1 Georgia, I think they both get in, and, and then somebody's feelings are going to be left hurt, and they're not going to get in. So – yeah, that is. If you, I don't think a lot of people are getting tired of SEC bias, and uh, there'll be a lot of pushback if that happens. But I think that would be the two best teams getting in if that does happen. I think uh, Bama is obviously a dream killer for so many teams. Yeah, is even if they're even well, if they're two loss, it, it don't matter in the SEC. If you're a two loss team, but you win the SEC championship game, yeah, I feel like I feel like you're in regardless. And so, so, so you mean if my Auburn Tigers went out? Yes, we're getting in, we're getting in the final four. I think they should be in. I think whoever wins the SEC championship I, I should agree. be in. It. And that and I that's agree. what's cool. I think Auburn's got a shot. A and M's got a shot. Bama's got a shot. I think Georgia's look, unless Georgia loses to Tennessee in two weeks, like I think they might, and they lose in the SEC championship. I think Georgia's <laughs> Georgia's only guaranteed, really. Well, well, if Georgia loses to Tennessee, then whoever wins the SEC championship's in for sure. When for sure, it'd just be one SEC team. Uh, so. I think something good that Auburn has for a two-loss team getting in is, like, both their losses came relatively early. Yep. Yep. And they Penn State they, winning. Auburn, Auburn has been playing better this past couple of weeks. I mean, they do look a lot better. But the thing that sucks for Auburn, they probably got the toughest schedule of any team in the uh, SEC left. Remaining, yes. Yeah, they, they do. this week. A nobody in them Bama. Yep. I think they got Arkansas squeezed in there. Maybe South Carolina. That sounds so right. Yeah, they got Arkansas in there. I know. So that's that's gonna be a pretty tough, pretty tough section in there. But I, I don't think Texas a and gets in, even if they. I mean, they they could win out. I, I see it being real hard for them to get in. But a and M wins out. That means they beat Auburn, which is gonna knock Auburn out of it. But yeah, of Auburn can realistically beat Bama. I mean, that's not outside of the rim. So if all if a And M beats Auburn, Auburn beats Bama. It's Texas A&M holds the tiebreaker yep. in the SEC West. So, that means A&M, two loss A&M goes to the SEC championship. If you beat Georgia, you are in. No, it don't matter if you get two losses or not. Have I agree. to. I agree. Have to. I agree with that. Moving on to the Big 12, we got three teams from the Big 12. We got Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, and Baylor. How did each of these teams get in? Go ahead, Coach. Well, Oklahoma, that's the easy one. They, they went out, go undefeated. They're, they're in. I think I think they're in, but I, but this is another case. Oklahoma's remaining the schedule. It's probably tougher than Auburn's because you got whoa, OK whoa, State. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Let's not go that far. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, you got, all right, you got okay. All right, it's still really tough because you got okay, Oklahoma okay, okay. State, Baylor, and then I want to say Ohio State. So I mean, those are obviously Chuck's not here. He's our Big Twelve guru, but Oklahoma's remaining the schedule is. There's every game is crucial because they are in that position. They have to go undefeated. I agree. However, I, I give it to Oklahoma. I've been a biggest Oklahoma hater all season, but they have looked a lot better the last couple of weeks than new quarterback. quarterback change. Yeah, it's changed a lot. It does so, suck so, because I I don't want Oklahoma to win either. So do, you, do you do you think any one loss Big Twelve team can get in? That's the real question. Because if we're gonna say Oklahoma loses, we'll say they lose to Oklahoma State. Can a one loss – because undefeated Oklahoma's in. I mean, that's kind of – undefeated Oklahoma, they're in. We agree with that. Can a one loss – or a one loss Big 12 team get in? 
Yes or no? That comes the hard part because – so who do you kick out? Do you kick out a one-loss Big 12, a one-loss Big 10, or one-loss Pac-12? Somebody's got to get their feelings hurt. Yep. One of them, if not two, is getting kicked out for yep. all one loss. Every Everybody's rooting for – got to root for Georgia to win the SEC championship game because that's when you're going to start having these problems. But the thing that yeah. sucks about the Big 12 is – whoever they play, it's going to be playing back-to-back because Oklahoma is most likely going to be in the Big 12 championship game. Yeah. And then Baylor, Oklahoma State is most likely going to be their opponent. So you're going to be playing back-to-back in the span of about three weeks. I don't, I don't know. Like I, I don't like it. Yeah. yeah it's gonna, I'm just happy I'm not in that conversation, which I think a lot, a lot is going to change these last few weeks. It's going to be a lot more clear, but we'll yeah. see. I think – I don't know. The one loss Big 12 is – I mean, I want to say no just because I want to be biased against not put because Big 12 ain't done squat in the playoffs ever. No. Ever. And so I'm biased. I, I mean, I don't want to I don't want to put them in there just because of it. They're the Big 12. You know, I don't think they're better than uh Cincinnati and Ohio State, but I guess that's a conversation for later. I, I think that's a two loss SEC team is better than a one loss Big 12 team any day of the week. And I think we all agree with that. So I think well, for, how the I voters think Oklahoma there. has to stay undefeated. I think Oklahoma must stay undefeated for one, for them to get in. I one agree. loss, they're out. I I'm think forward. a lot of people are already sketched on Oklahoma. Yeah, so I agree. One loss, and they're out. Moving on to the Big Ten, we got four teams. You got Michigan State, which just had a big win against Michigan. Ohio State, Michigan, and Minnesota. How did each of these teams get in? Minnesota, how are they going to get in? Right now, they're winning that. That division, they're in first place in that division. They really? went out. Yeah. Really? That's just because that that. that's just because the other side of that division is so bad. I was they have two losses, don't they? Yeah. They got two losses, yeah. I don't think a, I don't think I mean I could be wrong, but I don't I don't think a two loss Big Ten team gets in. No, I don't either. Even right. a champion. One Big Ten team has to go. Because Big Ten is arguably the second best conference in football right now. I agree. I mean, that's a safe assumption. So, yeah. that means it, there has to be at least one Big Ten team well, in the playoffs. Just unless, one. Unless Minnesota wins. <laughs> Hang on now. If Minnesota wins it, nobody gets in. Two SEC, uh, Cincinnati, and Oklahoma. Yeah. Two lost Cincinnati or Minnesota winning that does not get in. Now, if, Even if they if run I, the table, beat Ohio no. State in the Big, Big Ten championship game. No, Minnesota. No, no. no. Now, if Ohio State runs the table, they get in. If Michigan State runs the table, they get in. Yes. But Minnesota's not getting in two losses. No. You don't you don't think we can row the boat to a national championship? <laughs> I mean, they're gonna need to, they would have to have, <laughs> Okay, they would have to have Oregon lose again. They'd have yeah. to have Cincinnati lose. Are we really putting a Pac twelve team in the cha- in the playoffs? So I thought we just <laughs> I'm not I'm not I, I, I thought we just asked that Pac. We still on the Pac twelve? I've marked them hey. on the sheet over here. The only way a Pac-12 team gets in is if the Big 12 or the Big 10 beats up on each other and all beat each other. They all get a couple losses before the end. And right, Cincinnati so, loses. So we're, all right, so, I mean, I, I can't argue with you about the Minnesota, but you're saying Minnesota, no chance. on No chance. They're fighting no, an uphill battle for sure. They, they need to just row their way to a New Year's Eve bowl. All right, what about Michigan? Michigan done? No Michigan even if they went out? Uh, Michigan still has a chance. I think they still have everything they're fighting for in front of them. They're one last team. They looked they looked pretty good against Michigan State. They just couldn't hold it off at the end. Yeah. So Michigan still has a chance. Obviously, Michigan State's got a chance. Ohio State's got a chance too. Ohio State's the best team over there. Not even I, without a shadow of a doubt, they're the best team. But they're not saying they're going to win it. But they're the best team in the Big Ten. The only question the Big Ten is worried about is. How fast is old Tucker going to take the LSU job? Because, <laughs> I mean, that's what's about to happen. Hopefully, I don't know. hopefully, hopefully he takes it after they win the national championship. <laughs> I uh, think Ohio State, is, their quarterback is like Bo Nix. He did a wake-up call, and now he's playing out of his mind. He's not playing good until they lost to Oregon. After that, he's been lights out. My. Are they be, are they beating Michigan State though? So you you saying Ohio State's in beating Michigan State? I think yeah, I think they're better than Michigan State. I think Michigan State's gonna be good for a couple of years with the new coach. That they've already they were predicted what six wins this season. They're already way past that. 
I mean, they're having a great season. I'm still not sold. I mean, I could be wrong. They keep proving me wrong every single week, but we'll see. I think Ohio State – I think their offense is too good for Michigan State. I don't think Michigan State can win a shootout with them. What happens – I agree. What, what happens if Ohio State beats Michigan State, which should happen? Michigan <laughs> somehow beats Ohio State, which could – which Darbaugh is going to do for a win. None of them get in. None of them get in. Big 10's out. <laughs> Done. All right. Well, that, but that still leaves Michigan State one loss, though. No, nah, it don't matter. Oh, oh, the wait. But they're not a champion. ACC, though. Wait for us, champ. The wait for us. ACC championships are going to get in, boys. No way. No. <laughs> okay, moving on. Is there a <laughs> is there a possibility that Wake Forest gets in? I know you just said Unde- it, but are you being un- serious? Undefeated, they get in. Undefeated, Wake Forest gets in. Yes, they ACC champ undefeated. They got to get in. I think ACC I think, is weaker than American League right now, or American Conference. <laughs> well, that's just because you're comparing them to Cincinnati. Conference as a whole, conference as a whole, it's 50 50. Uh, Wake gets in as long as Georgia wins the SEC. Yeah. If and they're undefeated. And they're undefeated. They have to yeah. be, that's a given. You lose one, it's done automatically. So, but they're not in, what? even if they go undefeated, I can't say they're a lock. I can't. Are I'm you putting them over a, a one loss Oregon champion? Yes. 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 ACC so, yeah. greater than Pac 12. If we have Wake Forest and Cincinnati in the final four, who in the world predicted that? Nobody. There will be a 12 team playoff the very next year if that happens. <laughs> that will be. <laughs> I don't know if they would find some way to make sure that don't happen. Yeah. Absolutely. I just I just feel like even if those uh, are the if, four if best happen, teams at the end of the year, they'll, they'll find a way to do it. They'll play each other to keep them in one of them in the national championship. Oh, that's right. Cool. Do they? Fine. Is there a rule set in place where same conference can't play first round? No. No. So, no. So, so you're saying Bama and Georgia could potentially play, or Bama back Auburn, back. Bama A and M could play in back the first round? Yeah, SEC championship. They could play SEC championship, but then back to back. Hmm. Yeah. Mm. There's gonna be some really mad fans after like. At the end of the season, because somebody, so there's going to be one or two good teams not get into this this year. Oh, absolutely. This is the first time, like usually in the past, I'm like, you know, four teams, it's it's pretty right on. But this is the first time this 12 team thing, I'm like, can we just go to it now? Because it makes so much more sense, makes everybody's job easy. Because if we want to say, let's take the top 12 teams, we can all name the top 12 teams and they're all going to be the same if we round them down separately. Yeah. Well, I got, I mean, I legit, I think there are, there are for real 15 teams that, that the paths could still happen. Now that, and I'm not even including uh, UTSA or um, whoever the crap's undefeated in the MAC. I don't even. Know. You should. Who? Uh, I was agreeing with you. Uh, yeah. Oh was, yeah. So, I have I mean, no idea who else is in undefeated. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, it's still San Diego State. That's who it is. Mount West. No, they just lost. They just San lost. Diego State. Yeah, they lost this week. Never mind. And SMU also lost. All right, so y'all are the biggest Pac-12 haters. Is there a world that Oregon gets in in your eyes? <laughs> uh, Go ahead. Go ahead. If Georgia beats Bama and Oklahoma wins out and Cincinnati loses and Wake loses and uh, the Big Ten messes all that up, then, yes, there is a possibility, but it's not real high. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I think a lot I of agree. stuff that happens. Yeah, I think I think they're probably at the shaft of the of the deal because of they are the Pac-12. But the good thing Oregon does have going for them is they did beat Ohio State, even though they it was Ohio first State. game of the year. Even though it was first game of the year, they do have that going for them. And it would not shock me if they put Oregon in over Wake Forest. I would not agree with it, but I could see them screwing over an undefeated Wake Forest. Okay, how about this? Okay, you have Ohio State, Big Ten champion. You got Oregon. Pac-12 champion, the same exact record. Oregon has beat Ohio State. Do you put them over Ohio State? They have – they have beat them. Do you still put Ohio State ahead of them? The law of principality. You beat them, you're ahead of them. <laughs> but I have watched them, and they're not did better you, than Ohio State. Did you just make that law up? Yeah. <laughs> it was a real law. It's a good one. Okay. That's got to be the happen. biased law I've ever seen in my – that's got to be the most biased thing I've ever heard. You beat them, you should be in. I mean, that's okay. I mean, that's just that's sports. But yeah. when you watch them, Oregon is not better than Ohio State. 
but they beat them though. So they are better. I agree. I, that's what I'm just saying. I, the law <laughs> of sports fatality says you should be in, but I don't think they will. There's a reason okay. you, you don't get a vote. Okay. All right. All right. Love it or junk it. Love it or junk it. We got to move on. Let's go. Love it or junk it. All right. Cincinnati, we've already talked about that. They're in if they yeah. went out. Uh, Notre, Notre Dame. Dame is their world they get in. No, we all hate Notre Dame. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, not a fan of Notre Dame. Uh, <laughs> Cincinnati already beat him. I hate him. <laughs> love it or junk it. Without Derrick Henry, the Tennessee Titans can still make a Super Bowl run. Love or junk it. Coach, what do you think? Junk. He's too good of a player. That Ryan Tannehill is a really good quarterback, but Ryan Tannehill is a really good quarterback because of Derrick Henry. You know, you have to you have to put three people down there and just put all eyes on him because it takes about three big old dudes to bring him down. With Derrick Henry, I thought they had a chance. Without him, I don't I don't have faith. Zach, you're not going to understand this next statement, but me and Seth do. Um, Tennessee is no longer going to see loaded boxes. <laughs> the box is going to open up. And right, they're not going to throw the ball as much. So, Tennessee, sorry, but you you may sneak into the playoffs, but you don't get a chance to win the Super Bowl. They just on Adrian Peterson. I love it. They still got a chance. <laughs> hey, there's a – what is he, fourth overall, all-time leading rusher? Yeah, something like that. 56, yep. 57 now. <laughs> he's, something, he's about that age. All right, the Cleveland Browns are the worst team in the NFC, AFC North. Love or junk it? Love it. I mean, are they better than the Bengals, Steelers, and Ravens? No, 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 no. I guess Love we'll it. find out this week. Don't, don't they play the Bengals? They do yeah, play the Bengals, work. but they just we'll, lost to the Steelers. We're picking that game next later on, so save your pick. We are picking that game. <laughs> I, I I love it. I think they are the worst team in the division. Not and but it, not not that they're that bad, but they're too inconsistent. They got too many injuries, and yep. Baker Baker Mayfield just he just. I don't know. He should be a lot better than he is. So I'm, I love he's it. A lot better worst than commercials he, he's a lot better in commercials than he's been playing. That's yes, true. I agree. <laughs> Next, the Las Vegas Raiders are better off without John or with John Gruden gone. Yeah, I said it right. Love it or junk it. With John Gruden gone, Las Vegas Raiders are better. I love it. They were good with Gruden there, started out 3 and 0. But the reason I think they're better off is because I think his name is it Basaccia. Is that how you pronounce the new guy's name? He likes to run the ball. They've ran the ball a lot more ever since he's taken over, and they've been very successful. Kenyon Drake, Josh Jacobs, and when you can run the ball in the NFL, that makes you a much more lethal team. So I love it. They're a lot better off without him. I, I agree. I love it, and I agree for the same reason. Carr is a good quarterback, but not when he's carrying the load by himself. He's the same way. He needs a good running game. So as much as I like Gruden, you know, he was an offensive genius. I will say that, but he liked to throw a ball a lot. Kind of like me calling some plays out there. But they're running the ball now, and they're better with him going. Yeah, love it. They've been playing a lot better. All right, moving on to our next segment. Going fill in the blank. Uh, I'm the first one up, so I'm the first one is the Texans should blank Deshaun Watson at the trade deadline. And I think I'm not sure if they're going to, but I think they should trade him. Uh, I think that's the best off for him and the team. Just get him out of the locker room. If they can find someone to take him, that's just what I think. You guys agree? If you're, the, if you're the Texans, what do you want for him at this point? I mean, you also got to think about yourself, though. Do you want, like, that kind of drama in your locker room or, I mean, all that stuff going on? Or you just want to – if you're planning on playing him, I say keep him. But if you're not going to plan on playing him, trade him, man. The Texans should want two massages and a first-round pick. <laughs> 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 All right, man, you're up. Uh, Notre Dame should join the blank conference and get away from being independent. First of all, I hate that they're independent. I think that's crap. That's, but I'm going to say I liked it when they were in the ACC last yeah. year. I think it kind of made sense. And I, don't, I don't understand why they're not going back. And I think with all these teams joining the SEC and all this stuff happened, that they have to join a conference. And I think they go back to the ACC. I agree. All right. Coach, you're up. The Blake will be the best – will be the team that puts out Tom Brady and the Bucks in the playoff. Green Bay Packers and the Los Angeles Rams, the two best pass rushers teaming up. They, Rams got Von Miller today. How do you get to pick two of them? You can't pick two. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> the Packers and the Rams are going to be putting them out. If one of them don't – it's whichever team is on the same side of the bracket. Oh my! Oh, Every team's on the same side of the bracket. If you have to pick one, I'm, I'm gonna go with the Rams. The pass rushes, 
You like oh, that I trade mean, today? You that like was that a trade? steal. The Broncos should be <laughs> embarrassed. So steal. Two, two late picks for Bond Miller? Steal. God. It's insane. It's insane. Jeez. I feel bad for – I mean, I wouldn't want to see those two dudes coming at me. And you got Jalen Ramsey. That GM should be fired. That is terrible. <laughs> that's a terrible trade. Awesome. When I seen it, it said – I thought I, – honestly, I read it wrong. I thought it said two second-round picks. It said two second-day picks, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. Two second-day oh, picks. Oh, jeez. Jeez, that's so two bad. Two second-rounders. I can – Mike can read them. He said two second days, and I was like, my God. Junk. I mean, God, it's bad. I'd trade, I'd trade Chuck for more. <laughs> <laughs> that's a very good point Ram, Rams you speak to Rams I, I, I'd hate to be the person betting against Tom Brady but you had to pick somebody uh, next one says Chuck so I guess we'll all answer this one because he's not here uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers should acquire blank at the trade deadline to help boost their lineup as they make a run for the playoffs Ah, I got one good one Odell <laughs> Beckham Jr. That is oh, a good one. Man. Not catching the football with the Rams. I mean, the Browns. Him and Baker don't like each other because they both want the attention. He's not getting the football. A couple of years ago, he was what the best receiver in football, maybe top three at least. He needs the football. Send him to the Steelers and get him the football. I was close. I was going to go um, Deshaun Jackson from the Rams. He's already wanting out. I like let the Rams. Like let the Rams get some picks back because they obviously just traded away all their picks. That they might have had, so send them to the send them to the Steelers. Try to get a second or third round pick for it. Give big give big man a dig a big deep ball threat. Yep, that's a good one. Seth, what you got? Uh, I'll be honest, I don't really watch the Steelers. I haven't watched the game all season, so I don't really know. <laughs> but I, I like I like the Odell Beckham Jr. answer, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna agree with you on that one. It, depending on what happens with the Titans, they may be dumping off Julio. They might. Or it could be his time to shine. It could be Julio's never, time to shine. He's never even on the field. Like, he's hurt all the time. I mean, wasn't he yeah. played two games this year? He's a wuss. Wuss. Yeah, not, every, not everybody's a glass eater. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you don't eat the glass. Uh, that's... That, that concludes our first segment of our Mental Dimes podcast. All right, guys, we are joined. We got Josh Neighbors. He's the host of the Locked on the Big 12, not the Big 10 podcast. He's also the associate producer of the Sirius XM College Sports Radio. Uh, we appreciate you being on, Josh. Yeah, I appreciate you guys having me on. I'm going to let you take over, Seth. Yes, sir. So, Josh, in our last podcast, we talked about three teams in the Big 12 that have a serious chance to make it into the, the Final Four. Uh, so we got Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, and Baylor. How do you think each team gets into the playoffs? Uh, Oklahoma, I would say it's keep doing what you're doing. I know that people don't think they've really hit their stride yet. Um, last week was the best all-around game they've played this year, but Tech's not very good, to be honest, and they just fired Matt Wells. So how much you want to read into it, I don't know. Um, they're, we're going to figure out how good Oklahoma is here their next three games. They have Iowa State. They've got Baylor. They also have Oklahoma State. And those are the three teams that really are chasing them in the Big 12. Uh, for Baylor, man, they've been so good this year. I, I don't yeah. – the team's not good enough, I don't think, uh, to make the college football playoff. They need a lot of help, it yeah. seems to me. And then Oklahoma State, I actually think if you're looking for a one-loss team out there that's kind of on the periphery, Oklahoma State's your best bet because if their offense really? plays well – then, the, you know, they're – I mean, they're going to be one of the toughest teams to beat because their defense has been so solid the entire year. And if it wasn't for a bad spot against Oklahoma – and what my opinion was a bad spot against Iowa State, then they would have a chance to tie or go I agree. Ahead and, I and agree. Win. Yeah, it was a bad spot, bad spot. Uh, they would have had a chance to go ahead and win that game. And I think Oklahoma fans, uh, if you ask them the team that they're most worried about, they would definitely say Oklahoma State now – I think Baylor might have the right recipe to beat Oklahoma just because they're a bit more balanced than Oklahoma State is. But yeah. Oklahoma State, they have a killer defense, and that's going to keep them. It's kept them in every single game this year. And so they're going to have a chance to go 11 and maybe 12 and 1 this year. Do you think, do you think 
that I mean, obviously, Big 12 is not going to be a two two bid league. You're not going to get two teams in. Uh, but do you think Oklahoma can go undefeated, even though they play both Oklahoma State and Baylor to finish out? Yeah, that's the question because it's going to require them beating somebody twice, which yeah. I uh, think is the challenge. And that's like. I don't want to face Dave Aranda twice. I wouldn't want to face Matt, uh, um, uh, totally blank <laughs> with, uh, coach from Iowa state, totally blank on his name. Matt Campbell wouldn't Campbell. want to play him twice, obviously. And then Mike, I wouldn't want to play Bedlam once and then play Bedlam in the, in the championship game either. That's not really something I'd be, I'd be wanting to do. So they can do it, especially that defense tackles their defense has to tackle. They have been miserable in the Kansas game. They were miserable. In the Texas game, they were really miserable. They've got to be able to tackle and tackle four quarters. Uh, yeah. The offense seems like it's going to take care of itself. But if they can start tackling better, they definitely have a chance to get a 13 now. That new quarterback has been a, been a big, big 12 team. Oh, what? Go ahead. I, I was just saying, that's the, that's a, they're a typical big 12 team is what – because, you know, speaking from an SEC type, you can score a lot of points, but you can't play no defense. Yeah, well, the thing about the Big 12, what's interesting is the defenses have been getting so much better. And what we heard about all offseason was how good Oklahoma's defense was going to be, how good Alex Grinch's group was going to be, how prepared they were. And I know they've dealt with some injuries, but their secondary has not tackled. Their front has gotten pressure at times. I think Nick Benito and Isaiah Thomas and Perry Winfrey and Jalen Redmond, it's a really good group up front. Then they can cause a lot of problems. They just haven't done it consistently. So I would say that's a group that can cause some teams some problems. But I don't know if it's the highest level. And I was at the Peach Bowl guys back in – I forget what year it was. They really played LSU, right? And the one thing that was noticeable, and you guys know this too, is like just the, the SEC athletes are different. And mm-hmm. it looked like, you know, it looked like waves hitting rocks, uh, you know, just kind of hitting the, hitting the rocks and just kind of dissipating. When they, the Oklahoma defense was going up against the LSU offensive line. They couldn't, they couldn't get much pressure, uh, and, and it was the entire game. And it was just clearly any – it was a huge difference. And Oklahoma wanted us to believe this year that they'd made big strides in that category, that things were better on that front. And to be honest, they really aren't much better from that perspective than they were a couple years ago. And they're better in relation to Oklahoma, but are they a top-tier defense? No, they're, they're not a top-tier defense. So who is the best defense? Oklahoma State is probably one of the best defenses yeah. on that. So yeah, I, Iowa State's it, was Iowa yeah, State's was, and then yeah. West Virginia, West Virginia so, ran. The, I mean, ran their defense out of the building. They sure did. They sure I, did. I've been a, I've been rooting for Oklahoma all year. I've kind of I like them. I've watched them play, and I agree they should be undefeated. And that's what I agree. Not I mean I'm an outsider looking in. You, you watch a lot more than me, but they have a pretty good defense, and I think somebody like them is really going to give Oklahoma fits because they play a little more defense. Their offense is pretty good. If they were undefeated going against Oklahoma, man. That would be a, that'd be a game right there. Yeah, Oklahoma State. You mean? Yes, Oklahoma yeah. State versus Oklahoma. Yeah, Oklahoma. It's gonna be a great game because that's the one thing that Oklahoma State defense they tackle, they tackle, they mm-hmm. tackle, they tackle. Malcolm Rodriguez. Y'all haven't seen him play. This guy is a he's one of those kids is just a ball magnet. You know, he's just one of those yeah. guys always around the football. And actually, Colby Harvell Peel, their outstanding safety, joked. He's like, I wish he would not tackle as many people because I don't see anybody back here. He's like, I don't I don't get many tackle opportunities. Because Mal- because you know Malcolm Rodriguez is doing it, so uh, it's hilarious, right? That a Mike Gundy team is known for now running the football and playing <laughs> awesome defense. I love uh, it. So it's because it's because he cut his mullet. Yeah, right. The mullet. Yeah, the mullet changed. <laughs> changed so, did the team, so did the team. And I just want I just want to note this that uh, now people on the outside know Jim Knowles. You know, I know obviously football heads know Jim Knowles, but comes over from Duke, known as Sir Blitz a lot. Man, they bring the pressure and they bring it all game long. You know, the one thing for Texas that we've seen and uh, Oklahoma at times is like these teams can't sustain for four quarters. And the one thing that Oklahoma State, and I'm sure you guys, you know, strength and conditioning coach, what are you guys going to appreciate this a little bit? Uh, you know, it, the one thing you can appreciate is these guys do it for like four quarters, right? These guys. Yeah. Uh, Oklahoma, close, yeah. yeah and, and even in their loss to Iowa State, the one thing you can't t- say, tell me is that they were not bringing it for four quarters. They weren't up the challenge. They're getting stops late in the fourth. So yeah. that's the one thing that I think gives them a chance is because they're tough from pillar to post. Yeah. Speaking of this strong OK State team, uh, moving into our, 
our top picks this week. Do you think they can go on the road to West Virginia, who has played Big 12 teams pretty good all, all year, coming off a big win and holding Oklahoma uh, 16 points and playing really tough? Do you think they can go on the road and come out with a win? Yeah, they should have beat Oklahoma right there. That uh, I'm not sure you guys saw the game, bad snap. And yeah. combined a rough game for the center. Uh, he had a penalty and then had a bad snap that really put him in a range. Um, they've been awesome last couple of weeks. Jared Dagey has really turned turned the corner for me at quarterback in a way that I didn't think was possible. I thought I thought they should have made the switch to Garrett Green um, pretty recently, but they stepped with, stuck with Dagey. He was phenomenal the other day. Uh, I would say Oklahoma State's just they're they're tough. Like it's just the one thing is like they're tough, and I, and I think this is kind of a year. Last year was supposed to be their year because they had Chuba Hubbard, they had Tylen Wallace. But their offense was kind of a, a – the offensive line especially was a bit of a question mark, kept sliding in and out. So I think now I'm at a point where this is the team that they really wanted to have last year. Yeah. And it's manifesting itself this year. And so I think they continue. I, I think they continue that march on. And I think it's a close game. But I, I trust um, I trust Oklahoma State to get to get it done on the road. They've been, yeah. they've been so tough. And West Virginia, while they've had a nice last couple of weeks, inconsistent. I agree. Coach, what do you think? West Virginia, they're eight and one at home in their last nine games, dating back to the last two years. West Virginia is also five and three to cover against the spread. Oklahoma State, they've looked bad every well, not, I'm not gonna say they look bad. Every one of their close games have been on the road, only beat Boise by one. They lost at Ames and Iowa State. But I'm not there picking against I'm not picking against Oklahoma State against West Virginia. I think West Virginia is way too flaky, way too streaky, and Oklahoma State is a really good team. And I hope they win out. I mean, it's kind of like me and Maynard's been on it all year. I I'm rooting for them. They're a fun team to cheer for, and they got a, just a, such a cool mascot. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna Mayor, take Oklahoma State. I got Oklahoma State. I think that, I think it's going to be close just because their road games seem to be close. But I think Oklahoma State's going to play enough defense to get them by. I mean, they're going to win by three, seven points. I mean, it's going to be a one-score ball game somewhere in there. But I will not pick West Virginia because our other host is a West Virginia fan. So, Oklahoma State. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I completely agree. I don't think West Virginia can play them tough for four straight quarters. I, I agree Oklahoma State is going to play good four quarters, and I just don't know if West Virginia can keep up for that long. Uh, moving over to our next game, got uh, Wake Forest traveling to North Carolina. What do you think? Uh, I will – so my dad is a Wake Forest graduate. I, I have to mention put that in there. Um, so I think I think they keep it rolling. Like, what is the, is the Carolina defense ever showed us they can stop anybody? Now Wake's defense the same, right? They now they were a bit better last week, I, sh I should say. But I, I've got Wake in this game. I think the Deeks keep it rolling. Uh, one of the more efficient offenses that you're going to see in the country. I mean, they're absolutely ruthless. That that game against Army, seventy points or sixty three on offense, <laughs> seventy <laughs> minutes of possession. Uh, that's absurd. And uh, Sam Hartman and the wide receiving core there are different levels. So I'm going to take. I'm going to take Wake Forest in a shootout. Gotcha. Coach? Um, I want Wake to go undefeated. I think there's a really cool story. And I would love to see Wake Forest in the playoffs. But let's not forget that North Carolina did start the preseason ranked at number 10. They still have Sam Howell, who is who was a Heisman, Heisman guy preseason, and he's still a good quarterback. I mean, don't take anything away from him. He's had some bad games, but he's still Sam Howell. North Carolina's favored. We've talked about it throughout the year. When a when an underdog is favored like they are, there's a reason for it. I'm gonna say North Carolina's gonna steal Wake Forest and and ruin their season down there this week. I'm mm. going with the Tar Heels. Hater. Wake Forest, that surprise ACC team that can mess everything up when it comes to the Final Four. Because who had Wake Forest going to the Final Four? They're not in my bracket, but the, so. I'm going to keep riding them. You know, I went for them against Army a couple of weeks ago when I think everybody else picked Army. Is that right, Coach? I you did know, pick Army. <laughs> yeah. I did pick Army. Everybody picked Army, and I stayed with Wake. I'm going to stay with Wake because I, I just think that offense is too good. I don't think North Carolina can win in a shootout with them. I got Wake Forest. Uh, yeah, I've been really split on this uh, all day just looking at it. I've said that Wake Forest is going to lose sooner rather than later, and I think – I think this is, this might be the week that they can do it. Uh, UNC's 
slowly improving. I don't know. Uh, that's my upset of the week. I'm going UNC. Uh, next, we got number 12, Auburn, coming off a big win, traveling to number 13, Texas A&M. Uh, start with you, Josh. What do you think? Uh, so, we got really good good Bo Nix last week. I mean, he's been good to Bo Nix for a while now. We're getting a lot more good Bo Nix. This is a spot where I don't really love it for, for him. Don't th This – this a and defense has potentially be really tough, and their offense has come along a lot better than I thought it would. So I'm going to go with A&M, especially because they're at home. Like, that's going to be a really difficult atmosphere. I'll take them at home. I think the line's like four and a half, four, four and a half. So yeah, right I'll take them straight up, and, and I, I would probably take them against the spread as well. Coach, what do you think? Auburn has never lost at Kyle Field since A&M has joined the, the SEC. I oh. did not know that. Wow. It's crazy fact. Good They've good never good lost good at Kyle Field since they joined the SEC. Wow. And like we talked about earlier, both of these teams are still in the hunt for the playoffs. Whichever one of these teams can run the table, um, hopefully, you know, if, if Auburn can knock off Bama, one of these teams could get in that SEC and have a shot at Georgia, you know, and maybe try to get their stuff in. So it's a big game both ways. Um Bo has been looking really good, and I think Brian Harson. he's not getting enough credit for how good the job he's really done at Auburn, yeah. um, especially since they fired that wide receivers coach. Bo has looked, which makes no sense at all. Bo hey, looks like a I new man ever honor. since they fired that guy. Um, yeah. But A&M's coming off a bye week, and I think Auburn Auburn's schedule is so loaded. They had a tough game against Ole Miss, and they looked good. But I think the bye week is going to give A&M the advantage, just more time to prepare – um, and it's a home game. I think the streak comes to an end. I'm taking a &M. That's not where I thought you were going with that at all. <laughs> I will say you, I was very misled on that. Um, I will say I agree. Jimbo's offense, Jimbo's offense is guru. I mean, he just is. He's going to score points no matter where he goes and who's playing quarterback. Jimbo's going to score points. But ever since Bo's been benched, the Bo benching, as, as you know, people have been saying, he's a different guy. His, yeah, he's good. I'm not a football genius, but I know enough to know his footwork's better, his decisions are better, his receivers are playing better, the offensive line's playing better. They have a really good run game when they want to do it. And y'all know I'm not going to pick against Auburn. So I got Auburn going over and keeping the streak alive there, Coach. <laughs> so It's going to be tough, but I'm, I'm rooting yeah. for him. I really am. I really, I'm rooting for him. I don't like Jimbo, so I'll root for him. Make My whole life, money uh, I grew up an Auburn fan. My whole life, I've uh, been a huge Auburn fan, big Auburn fan. Obviously, I've been cheering for Georgia this year because I – Got some roots tied there. Got a lot of guys there in turn four. Uh, I know Auburn's never <laughs> lost in Kyle Field, but Kyle Field is a tough place to play. Uh, they, they're named the 12th player or something like that, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. uh, coming off a of bye week, they got every single advantage, but I'm just going to – I can't choose against Auburn, so I'm going to pick Auburn. Uh, I, I got belief in Bo Nets. got belief in the defense. No balls. Got belief in the offense. Going <laughs> No balls. Or Eagle. Going Auburn. Where <laughs> Eagle. Moving on, got number 14, Baylor, traveling to TCU. Currently a six-and-a-half-point favorite. What do you think, Josh? Yeah, I mean, I am not going to pick a team coming off coaching change. We saw what happened to Tech last week. Uh, Baylor is just – like, I'll tell you what, guys. When Dave Aranda, one thing I love about Dave Aranda is he is the most – I call him the most introspective coach I've ever heard. He is so honest. And he was really good at evaluating all the mistakes that he made. Now, his first year was a COVID year in 2020, and he made some changes, fired Larry Fedora, um, talked pretty openly about a lot of the mistakes that he made, brings in Jeff Grimes, offensive coordinator, Eric Mateo, Mateo's offensive line coach, both come over from BYU. Their offensive line went from one of the worst in the country to uh, now top half in the country in terms of how, what they do, how they play. I think, I think even like higher than that right now. So, He's done such a good job. Gary Bohannon has been a really strong quarterback for them. And much of you guys have noticed this TCU defense is horrible. Absolutely horrible. So I'm going to take Baylor. They're, they're a better team. They're a more consistent team on offense. And also on defense, they're a much better group too. Coach? I don't know if it's because I, I was so vested in Baylor, obviously vested in the March Madness. So I'm used – when I think of Baylor, I'm just thinking that just chaotic – man bred defense is just guarding you coming at you so when i see that word baylor i just feel like they're about to go whip somebody's in but i've never <laughs> i've never understood why you announce you're going to fire a coach at the end of the season i've never understood the logistics and i'm sure there's a reason for that 
Um, you might know it, have better insight than I would, Josh. But I've never, I've never understood how that could benefit your team closing out the rest of the year just because of the discombobulated chaos it has to cause. And just because of that, I'm going to go Baylor. But TCU, they've only won one of their last five, giving up a lot of points. It's not a good situation, so I'm riding Baylor. Maynard. I think TCU probably couldn't stop the Fort Buston offense. They're bad. <laughs> I mean, they're <laughs> real bad. And and so I, I just I think Baylor, they just they're gonna score a lot of points. You know, Dave Miranda, I mean, I agree that that was a great hire by Baylor. You know, the only thing is I'm not sure how long he's gonna be there. Uh, you know, there may be a bigger Baylor. He might not even be he, he might not even be coaching Saturday. They, he, he might be done before <laughs> yeah. then. Yeah, but uh I I got TCU losing big. So yeah, I think this is a no-brainer going Baylor. Uh, last college pick we have got number 23, SMU come off their first loss, traveling to Memphis. Currently a six point favorite. What do you think, Josh? Yeah, it's uh, interesting to uh, one to look at for me because Sonny Dykes, coach there at SMU, is going to be a target for TCU. TCU has got their eyes squarely on him. Obviously, guys in the Metroplex coaching right now, uh, a guy who's only had one job in the P5, it was a Cal bad fit. So he'll be looking to get back to the P5 uh, here pretty soon. So I'm like I'm liking that, and they're gonna bounce back. Memphis has a interesting team. They their offense is hit or miss. Their defense is hit or miss. They're coming off a really weird game against UCF where they lost 24 to seven. So I'm gonna roll with SMU. I think their offense gets back on track, and their defense. What do you think, Coach? Uh, Memphis is sneaky good. Um, they're sitting at four and four, but three of their losses have been by one possession. They knocked off Mississippi State earlier in the year. Um, I don't know much about SMU or Memphis, either one. I've not watched either team play. I'm just kind of going off some statistics looking up. But when SMU puts up 42 a game, that may, I mean, there's a reason they put up 42 a game, and they're going to be hard to stop. You don't just go from putting up 42 to putting up 10. Um, I don't think Memphis can match that. And kind of like, you know, SMU still got a lot to play for. They still got an American championship they want. So I'm going to keep – I'm going to say SMU gets it. What they made her? This is not the same Memphis team that's been p- competing at a really high level the last couple of years. No. You know, those Memphis teams the last couple of years, I mean, they've been undefeated at this point in the year. They've been one of the top teams, people, you know. And, Coach, the reason they're scoring 42 games because they're not playing real good teams at SMU. <laughs> that usually helps. That usually <laughs> so, helps. Does help. Does help. <laughs> but, that, but Memphis might be one of those teams they put up 42 against because they're not going to be very good either. That was my next point. Uh, Memphis is one of those teams that they're probably going to get a score forward to against because they're not real good either. So I got SMU. Yeah, uh, I think SMU is the better team. Uh, my only question is, what is their locker room like right now? Like, did, they kind of lost like the Final Four like potential, and there wasn't many people talking about it. But they went out; they could start a conversation about it at the end of the year. Kind of losing that. Obviously, they still have the conference championship, which they still want to do that. Uh, but I, I just don't know like the mentality of of the locker room. Uh, if they're still in it, they still have belief in each other. But I think as long as they're still in it, I think they're going to beat Memphis pretty handily. If not, it's going to be a lot closer game than that. Uh, moving on to our NFL games, uh, we're going to the Browns traveling to the Bengals. Josh, starting with you, what do you think? Yeah, so weird one yesterday for the Bengals, guys. Uh, bad call, I'm not sure you guys saw it. A bad helmet-to-helmet hit call prevented them mm-hmm. from getting the ball back, which, yes. was, yep. which was odd. Um, the Browns, like, what the hell is up with the Browns? Like, what's going on? They just seem like a rudderless team that's kind of crumbling under the weight of expectations. And I said this going into the year, I was like, look, until somebody, until the Browns actually win the division, I'm never going to expect them to actually win the division. And here they are, they're 500 team. Uh, huge week for them. Is is this game in Cleveland or where is it? Is it in Cincinnati? Oh, it's in Cincinnati. Oh, I'm taking the Bengals then. I'll go. With, yeah, this is, this is a close <laughs> matchup. No, but I think it's one of those where it's, it's going to be close. So, I'm going to go with the home team. So, I'll take Cincinnati. And I'm a huge Joe Burrow guy. Coach. All right. So, question for all of you. The Jets, this was their second win of the year last week when they beat the Bengals. The Jets' last win, the last time they beat a team, that team won three straight games against really good people. Mm -hmm. Tennessee Titans destroyed the Chiefs, beat the Bills, beat the Colts. I think the Bengals are they even it's just something about when you lose to the Jets, you get some mojo power. So <laughs> yeah, I think Joe Burrow, Joe Mixon, they come in, they're gonna roll off about three or four in a row here. I don't I don't think the Browns are too beat up. Browns defense is good, but I'm gonna go with the Bengals. Uh, Maynard. I, I agree that the Bengals lost. 
I'm not saying they lost because of a really bad call, but they still had a really good chance to win when that call was made. Um, you know, the Browns are the worst team in the AFC North. We talked about that earlier. And so I got the Bengals. They got a good young core with the Bengals, and I like that. I think the Bengals, they got a real good team. I got the Bengals. Very exciting to yeah. watch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think the, I think losing to the Jets was a big wake-up call, especially for that defense. Uh, I, I like the Bengals coming off the loss. Uh, next up, got the Chargers traveling to the Eagles. Uh, currently, the Chargers are a two-and-a-half-point favorite. Josh, what, starting with you, what do you think? It says Chargers at Eagles? Yeah, char- Chargers at the Eagles. Okay. Um, it's diff- <laughs> I, So, I feel bad for the Chargers because they're the only team that plays 16 road games a year, now 17, because they don't have any fans, uh, which is really – it's really, I, feel, I feel horrible for them. I really do feel horrible for them. Um <laughs> Uh, Justin Herbert bounces back. I, I, I got think we think Justin Herbert bounces back here. And he did not look sharp yesterday. I like him. He's a good player. He was not sharp yesterday. Pats were all over him. He bounces back. The Eagles got a fictional good win against the the Lions yesterday. So I'm gonna go with the uh, I'm go with the Chargers. Coach, I think what did the Eagles put up against the Lions? 44? 44. Yeah. They the Lions are trash. They're Bad horrible. trash. And so I can't believe I personally can't believe the line is as low as it is. Chargers only two and a half point favorites. It don't make sense why the Chargers struggled that much against the Patriots, other than Bill Belichick just is a really good coach and does a good job. But the Chargers is a really good team. They have s- such great players. They got a great defensive end. They got great running back, two multiple receivers, and Justin Herbert's on the rise. I think the Chargers win this game, win it big, big, big. Maybe, maybe two or three touchdowns. All right, Maynard. <laughs> I, I, I agree. I think Herbert, you know, he's kind of – he's played some really good defenses the last couple weeks, and this week, luckily for him, he gets to play the Eagles, and they're not as good on defense. So, I think it's his chance to sling it around a little bit more. So, I got the Chargers. Yeah, uh, I agree. Uh, come on from six points two weeks ago, then to, to, to a tough loss to the Patriots. I think they're looking for any chance to bounce back. I think the Eagles are the best team to bounce back against. Uh, yeah, going Chargers. Last game, we got Titans after they just lost their franchise running back for the rest of the year, traveling to the Rams. Josh, what do you think? Uh, they might get their ass whipped. I'm not sure what I can tell you. <laughs> the podcast. I, I think they might get – they're about to take it. They're about to take one on the chin. Um, <laughs> Derrick Henry's that offense, and Ryan Tannehill's really good when you use him you know, in concert with Derrick Henry. Like, if, if you can use him to make plays – those playoff games, he's always the guy who's making big plays. They relied on Derrick Henry. They said, all right, Ryan, we need you to make about 10 to 15 throws a game. And he usually does. That's going to change now. And he's going to have to earn his money now. And uh, the Rams defense is not the first team I want to earn my money against. So I'm going to go with the Rams. Coach, what do you think? Not only do you lose Derrick Henry, but now you also got to go up against Aaron Donald and Von Miller at the same time. Um I don't know if Grandpa Peterson can do anything at all, but I, I, I hope for the Titans. I, I like the Titans. I root for the Titans. I hope they can find a way to get in, but I just don't see them beating the Rams. Mayor, what do you think? You know, the Titans, like I said earlier, they're, that loaded box is is gone now. That box yes, is going to spread out. going to get a couple guys out of the box, and luckily this week they're playing the Rams. Is going to have two of the best edge rushers in, in the league, so I got the Rams. Yeah, I think that's probably the worst week they could have lost Derrick Henry. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. Cheer for the Titans. Hope they went out the rest of the season. Don't think it's going to happen. I got to choose. And with that, that wraps up our top picks of the week. Thank you for watching.